Yariko's war party was made to act as mere city guards, patrolling the streets of Kofu while their leader mingled with the local nobility in the martial arts dojos. There she amazed onlookers with her energy and skill in combat, winning fame and money enough for an ordinary prize fighter to retire. But even constant practice in the arena wouldn't be enough to pass the time productively. Fortunately, a chance for a little business trip arose. She fights with quite a measure of fury, despite the pallid face. Focus is all that is, Lord Sonata. No doubt, no doubt. Let's just hope she can focus as much on bigger strategies when the time comes. Either she can, or she shall be made to. Have faith in me. Well, as I've already said, I've no other choice. Please do not take offence. No, no, it's fine. Wonderful. Right, I shall vacate my spot then. Lord Baba's next in line. What's this? Oh, greetings, Lord Baba. Lord Ito. Not the Lord as it stands, actually. Ah, but not for long, eh? Let's not assume anything. Was there something you wanted to talk about? Just a little favour. Take this, explains all the details. Got a little business that is best taken care of by someone outside of the clan. Your lady should be perfect for it. Anything dangerous? Not if it goes smoothly. I need her to meet with an informant of mine in Kyusu. No man of Takada would last long in Oda lands, but I suspect they will turn a blind eye to her approach, given her record. I suppose they'd be happily expecting another free cleansing of bandits. Exactly, exactly. Shouldn't be any issue at all, and I must say it would be nice to give some other fighters a chance out there. A match against Lady Nerica is profitable only if you bet on yourself to lose. Hello and welcome to Nariko's Treasure. So Nariko has finally got an excuse to get out of Kofu. After a dozen plus tournaments, Lord Baba has finally given her an actual assignment to do. We need to go and meet up with an informant of his somewhere in Kyusu, the capital of the Oda clan. The Oda, of course, at war with Takeda, and you can even see the Takeda seem to have taken some territory from the Oda recently. So probably best if this was done by a neutral party rather than Takeda officers themselves as they'll be quite easily caught. Now, theoretically, I also am hostile to the Oda because I am mercenary to the Takeda, but luckily, a huge Tokugawa war party has just swept through and cleared all the roads of any military patrol, so we are safe to get right over to the capital. We also got called there to go and join a military campaign for the Takeda, but since we're busy with this, we probably won't be doing that. Now, as we tried to sneak into the town, Nariko was immediately recognized and the guards are going to try and spring on her. They knock her to the ground and instantly they'll be dragging her off to imprisonment as the leader of an enemy war party. Uh, she has no right to be in this city and they have every right to imprison her and make sure she doesn't take any military actions against them. I get the opportunity, though, later that same day to actually bribe my way out of this prison sentence. So I do that right away because I'm extremely rich. But I still need to get in and find the informant, so I try to sneak in again, hoping Naruko will try a different angle. But once again, we are immediately recognised by the guards. It seems Naruko is too recognisable, but we still can get in. If we actually knock out all the guards who see us, then we can still count as having snuck into the town. So we just have to win this very difficult fight. Naruko, because she is in a disguise at the moment, has no armor and is only armed with a wooden stick whereas the enemy have armor on them which will pretty much negate most of the damage from being hit with a wooden stick and unfortunately once again Nariko is defeated in that combat and thrown back into prison so this time we're going to have to wait longer before they decide to actually let us out and as soon as we do get out I'm going to try and sneak right back in this time I try and do it at night wondering if it'll be more successful if we can do this in the dark but apparently not because we we still are immediately recognized on the way in and once again we seem to be going in via the same approach so I think Nariko is uh, not being as clever as would be possible in this little infiltration attempt but we can still get in as I said if we could beat these guys down so it's time for some stick work we have to be super careful because one or two hits from the enemy will defeat us we'll have to get a load of hits on each one of them to bring them down but we can do this single file trick we try and move backwards down this long avenue and make sure we're only fighting one of the enemies at once. 
and uh, so far it's working quite well. We're managing to slowly defeat them. Here's actually the last guy who for some reason went off into an alley for a while and then came back to join the fight. Naruko just pokes him in the face and that knocks him out. He falls over backwards and now she has successfully infiltrated the town because no one who recognized her is left wandering around so she should have some time to try and find the informant. But there's a massive problem with this strategy. The informant, like most people in the town, isn't walking around the streets at night. This informant is probably just disguised as an ordinary townsperson, so we're not going to find them in the middle of the road at night basically, we'll have to wait for daytime, but there is no wait function in the game whilst you're inside a hostile town, so we actually have to come out and come back in again in order to get that. There's a little look at what Narako actually looks like, disguised as a monk. I was in the inn before I left and one of the farmers noted that a local farm has been taken over by bandits. So once Narako snuck back out of the town, I decided to go and clear Kuwana village out of those bandits just so we can do something good while we're here waiting for Narako to find a way into the town. So this bandit battle should be relatively easy, standard fare really. We allow the enemy to charge towards us, Narako distracting them and breaking up their formation with cavalry attacks. And once they're close, I order everyone to charge, they've already been damaged by a barrage of missile attacks which will continue and Narako can now just go behind them so they all turn around to look at her and the infantry will move up to rear attack them. Finally they turn around to look at the infantry and Narako will now rear attack them herself. So very quickly this fight is going to be won and the village is saved. So as usual we're going to be foregoing any reward from this fight, we're just doing it to help the people of Kuwana. So having done our good deed for the Oda clan, we'll go back to continuing to undermine them for the Takeda by trying to get this intel. So now it's daytime, all we need to do is sneak into the town successfully. Once again though, Narako is recognized on the way in and attempts to go in via the same route. So. Not very successful, the whole disguising apparently, because she is so recognisable even in the disguise. But there's still that chance of winning this fight. I tried to run up a different road there in an attempt to get the enemy to stack up behind each other into single file. It fails, I take damage trying to escape and then return to this longer route. So now we can try it again. We just want the enemy to always attack us one at a time so that Narco can always have time to block hits coming in. But the enemy aren't really playing ball this time, they've wisened up to Narco's strategy. They are sort of standing next to each other sometimes here in order to attack with two at once where we can't block their hits and slowly but surely Narako is taking hit after hit as no health left and there's the last hit bringing her down. So looks like we're going back to prison and we still don't have that intel however we might still have a way to actually get it. This one. <gasps> Lady Narako it really is you. Uh, hello what do you want? I want to clear up this mess. This is madness. Guard, come back quick. Let her out at once. Uh, yes, my lord. Lord, uh, sorry. I thought you were another samurai come to Orgle. They were doing that. That's unforgivable. I cannot apologize enough, my lady. Uh, here, let me help you up. I'm fine, thank you. I don't believe we've met, my lord. Lord Hashiba, it is an indescribable pleasure to make your acquaintance, my lady. That's, uh, well, thank you, my lord. I'm glad you've decided to let me go. Oh, it's nothing, nothing. They were talking about you trying to get into town and being arrested of all things. Such disrespect. I'm here to welcome you to the city properly. That sounds very nice. Noble of you, my lord. The least any man should do. Uh, shall we begin with a tour? Here, take my arm. I'm fine, really. Oh, but I insist, my lady. Uh, so be it. Oh, perhaps a little slower, though. So sorry, so sorry. <laughs> So, what do you know about Kyusu? But they're only ever as good as the trainers, and the trainers keep getting levied to fight by the minor lords. It's silly. Lord Oda won't listen to me at all. Again, it's the same for all the clans, if that's any consolation. I suppose it is. <laughs> oh, thank you, my lady, for your kind words. You're welcome. I'm just happy your Hadamoto is finally ready. I can't wait to see that new armor being put to use. Very striking. <laughs> flattery will get you everywhere, Lady Narako. It's not flattery, it's true. <laughs> Stop it, please. Uh, not in public, anyway. Uh, so, this is it. Uh, I'm heading up to the castle. Okay, I'll just need to order some supplies and then I'll return to my camp. But it's been really nice meeting you, Lord Hashiba. Uh, nicer than I'd ever hoped. Uh, call me Hideyoshi. Thank you, Hideyoshi Dono. Let's meet again. The heavens cannot stop me. <laughs> Good luck. Goodbye. Safe travels! Uh, what am I doing? 
Let's find that informant. All the information is concealed in the lid of this pot. Keep it safe. What sort of information is it? Military. One of the big shots around here has been training a new force of bodyguards. I've got details on all their equipment. Did you see how weak their armor was at the waist? What? They focus too much on the cosmetics. How do you... That's not what I was told. Keep the pot. I've got the layout of their castle, the guard routes, supply situation, and military intentions all figured out. Really? Care to share your secret? A lovely man told me all about it. We've got quite a lot of information now to report back to the Takeda clan. We just need to make our escape from the Oda domain. Some Oda forces are about, but they just get out of the way, not wishing to engage with Nariko. Now, on the way, our agreement to serve Great Lord Takeda for a month actually comes to an end. So we are now released of our bonds, just in time to be allowed to not take part in this siege battle. You can see the Tokugawa are about to make a major attack against the Takeda castle. So suddenly, our Takeda banners go down, and that is none of our business. I decided that in leaving the Takeda clan I'd basically just ghost my way out and not even go to see Great Lord Takeda. I don't want to give him a chance to convince me to stay or anything like that. So the easiest way is probably just to leave now that we no longer have any obligation to be there. I did go and report to Lord Baba just to hand in the information we had and say a goodbye to the Takeda clan through him. And now I'm plotting the route to head on towards Hokkaido. There's two vague paths I can take, one going through the Hojo territory and one through the Uvasugi. Decided to take the Hojo route just because I knew it a tiny bit better. On the way, stopping off at some of the villages along the main road to see if any of them need the services of a band of mercenaries, and one of them, a taggy, does actually want us to train up some of the peasantry in combat, so it's back with our clothes off at night with the sticks out, as we did when we visited Uchi, and luckily Nariko's had a chance to practice her stick work actually in a real fight over back at Kyusu, so she's able to show these guys a thing or two about that sort of combat. And funnily enough, with perfect dramatic time in the bandits, actually attack the village while we are there. So we will now aid the recently trained peasantry in this fight. The bandits brought a lot of archers, many of them just running up and standing there, firing at our guys quite close. Pretty bad for the peasantry who have no armor and are vulnerable to that archer fire. But it does mean the enemy can't really resist our counter-attack. We don't have any troops to stop us. And Mari there, kind of taking a swipe at Naruka by the looks of things with that pole arm. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and assume she was going for someone else. Anyway, the battle is quickly won. The peasants did lose one of their number in that attack, probably to the arrow fire, since they were very exposed, as I mentioned. But they've got their village back, and we will not be taking any reward for it as usual. Now I moved on to the city of Edo, very important city for historical reasons, although not quite yet in this timeline. What I wanted to do at Edo was get tasks from the Guildmaster to build a reputation so that we could perhaps invest in a business here since I've already started improving the reputation with Edo at some point during our time under the Takeda. They ask us to go and hunt down some local bandits. This proved to be extremely easy. These bandits were very poorly equipped. So I'm just using this battle as a chance to test out narrow abilities as a commander to try and stay out of the fight and just direct troops to maximize the effectiveness of the party. I'm kind of spreading out the Onobushi onto a separate flank, separate from the main battle line, so that they'll provide fire from the edge of the battle to support the fire already coming from the skirmishers in the main line improving our firepower overall basically. So that goes absolutely fine. We head back to Edo to hand that into the guild master. And uh, right after that, I'm going to be heading north to check on a local uh, village, thinking that they might also have something for me to do while I wait for a new quest to appear for the guild master. And they actually did need some rice to reseed their fields. And I actually had that rice already in my inventory, so I just gave it to them. But so that I actually did something for them, I'm going to do them a favor and actually hang around in the village for a few days and help them plant that rice, get the farming going. And they're so grateful they gave me 15 sacks of soybeans, which they apparently had. So that's quite a lot. Certainly don't need that. So I head back to Edo to sell that off and to go check in with the guildmaster. But one thing I also wanted to do in the city was go visit the castle. And when I did, I noticed that it was surprisingly full of women. There's just loads of female nobility standing around. And one of the women standing here in the main chamber seem to be of particular interest. She has foregone the usual colourful and flowery dress of the other female nobility and gone for something more dour, and when I speak to her, she immediately claims to be the head of the Uesugi clan. 
I followed you with great interest, Nariko. Your actions have boosted my own cause considerably. Glad to hear it. Would that cause be to enforce your claim over the clan? Yes, yes, don't worry. You haven't taken a wrong turn and ended up in Echigo. I was betrayed. I was raised by my father, Daimyo Usugi Norimasa. My mother was taken by disease when I was young, but my father refused to entrust me to a handmaiden. So he raised me himself, as if I was his son. I learned to fight, to ride, to talk politics and write prose. And as the eldest child of the ruler, I was the natural heir to his legacy. Just to clear the minds of any who had doubts about a female heir, he declared his intentions for me to rule with no room for ambiguity. And yet, there were always those who consider such appointments void. When I was serving with the Takeda, some of the maids told me that there was no law preventing women from ruling. There isn't, but all those stories of warrior empresses don't seem to sink in to some people's heads. And so, of course, some upstart vassal started challenging me as soon as father was in trouble. What kind of trouble? War. Things were going poorly, all because our vassal, the Nagao, were refusing to fight for the clan while I was still heir. They were ready to defect and let the clan fall. Father didn't have a choice. To keep the families joined, he was forced to adopt one of their generals, Kagetura. He was older than me, and more importantly, he was a he. No one cared to support my father in reverting the decision once the war was over, thus it never changed. So Kagetura now rules. Precisely. Yet all the lords and vassals remember what he did. That is why I finally challenge him in the only fashion he'll acknowledge, battle. Can you really fight against the daimyo? Many have asked that question. And all I need to do is point to you as an answer. Once people realize that I am a leader first and a woman last, they stop caring about all that. Soon I'll have all the men I need. I'm humbled, my lady, and inspired. You have my best wishes for your campaign. Wait, if you are truly inspired, then show me. Fight with me, Nariko. Your troops are legendary. With you I could storm the capital even if every lord still cowered behind the false legality of the mad dog's rule. <sighs> Sorry, but I have my own legacy to fulfill. Rather more humble, but I too am fighting to see the wishes of my father realized. Hmm. That is a true shame. But if you feel as strong about your own family's honor as I do about mine, then I cannot insist you do anything but fight to uphold it. Thank you, my lady. And next time we meet, may it be the case that both of our fathers hold no regrets for raising a girl as their son. Now I can return to my original business in Edo, going to the Guildmaster to find out what we can do business-wise. Unfortunately, things were pretty bad, actually. The economy was terrible, and the only thing that could make any money was some kind of fish offal plant. So we invested in that. It didn't cost very much. It's not going to make us very much, but that's something at least. And now we can continue on the journey through the very open Kanto Plains. Not much happening on the way, but I did spot a couple of bands of villagers being attacked by rebels near this bridge, which I think... The last time I came to Kanto, I ended up fighting rebels over this bridge as well. But anyway, it's going to be nice and easy. Only 30 or so of them, and they attacked in a really loose, open space formation, as we can see there. They just came over a hill in front of us, and I had the skirmishers and Onobushi arranged in a long line to maximize our firepower, and we just cut the enemies down as they approached and took a bit of practice to... Uh, get used to firing up mobile targets from the back of the line with Nauka, which is easy enough. So once the infantry advance to go finish them off, that battle ends, and we continue on all the way up to the Date capital of Sendai. Absolutely no problems on the way at all. It seems that this end of Japan basically hasn't seen either much war or much banditry. So I came here to visit the Guildmaster of Sendai to see if he had anything to report with regards to problems in the area, and he actually did have something to report as it turns out. Only though that there's been some looting going on as a result of the poverty brought on by the clan of warfare. So pretty much the lowest level problems that uh, places around Japan tend to have. So I guess that's good for the Date, but what we can do is discourage the looters by going and hunting down looting parties. And that's very easy, there's quite a few of them standing there. Just this one, they tend to have virtually no equipment, so we just charge into them, and they get hit by a storm of arrows as we advance, which kills most of them immediately. Absolutely no chance, uh, but they still contest the fight. They're going to fight on, and very quickly we'll just wipe them out here. Take a few hits to the horse, but I'm just being a blasé about it, since it matters so little. The enemy's attacks are very weak. So there they go. That's one man loot us down, and then I had to hunt down three more, and after that, return to the Guildmaster. He gave me a pretty insignificant reward for doing it. More importantly, he reported that 
the looting had pretty much died off now that Narco had put her foot down in the area. So that's probably going to be good for the local guilds and businesses. Now I also noticed that he was so happy about me doing this for him that I could actually invest in a business here as well. So I thought might as well keep stacking up these potential profits. And here we are able to get the expensive dye works and still make a profit from that. So that we shall do. Now with that all sorted, it's really just time to head on to the north. And pretty much nothing happened between here and reaching the very northernmost end of Japan. Very peaceful, as I said. So here we're going to travel to Hirosaki, which is the last major city before we reach Hokkaido Island, part of the Nambu clan's territory, who also control a little bit of Hokkaido itself. You can see they've kind of colonized the end of it and even put a castle up over there, but the rest of it is in an eternal winter, basically. Nothing out there but for two villages belonging to the Ainu people, the original inhabitants of Japan, the last remnants of them. But before we go up there, we're going to head into Hirosaki to resupply and get ready for our expedition out of the civilized world. And unfortunately, the second we arrive in Hirosaki, bandits attempt to attack Naruko did arrive in the middle of the night so perhaps the area isn't completely peaceful as it seems on the outside but still Naruko shouldn't have too much trouble here because all the bandits managed to come at her one on one they didn't, didn't uh, bunch up like they sometimes do so we cut down those first two with ease and now I'm left wondering where are the rest of them because we know there are going to be more checking in this back alley and seeing nothing and then I remembered that I've actually seen this exact bandit encounter before and the bandits come from down this road here you see someone coming around the corner there with the bow so first I took cover here. I thought if I stood here in cover, the guy with the bow might actually run forwards and be right next to me as I came around the corner, but he didn't really seem to care. He was willing to wait, just as he had been for the rest of the encounter, I guess. So now we go into melee with this guy, and he actually proves to be a lot better in melee than the guys wielding katanas, so perhaps they had their priorities wrong, who knows. And around the corner, there's one more guy who was just hiding till the very end, pretty much the worst possible way that the bandits could have played this, and they have been punished by Naruko for their extremely low-quality mugging attack. Attempts. So we'll steal a bit of money from them, and with the roads cleared, we can now go into Hirosaki and get ourselves ready for the final leg of our journey. I wouldn't attempt it without some experienced scouts and trackers. I've got it covered, Oji-san. Really? You've been to Hokkaido before, then? Oh, probably. Maybe not in this life. But if I think back really hard, I'm sure this old soul's been there a few times. <sighs> not much to rely on. Lady Narika. I admit it sounds like we're doomed, but Mary here knows her stuff. Even so, if you're taking that many people, how many did you say? 140. A half dozen horses, a few dogs and the like. No need to worry about any tribal warriors getting the drop on us. I was more worried about your food. There's not much to be had out there. Then it will be a good day in the market tomorrow. I'll pay whatever needs to be paid. <laughs> you don't hear that said these days. I have to ask then, why are you going to all this trouble? If we told you, we'd have to kill you. Well, we told you, so shall I get to work? It's okay, I'll tell you a little. We're looking for something quite old, a historical artifact that belonged to a wealthy family. Lands in chaos and the samurai are sending their warriors on treasure hunts? Maybe it's exactly what the people need to get their minds off the wars. <laughs> So it's not makeup. You really are a reckless youth. What is this treasure? The lost heart of a cold old man. I... no, uh, I won't say. For I fear you'll only mock. But please tell us if there's any place on the island, any significant location that might bear clues about such an artifact. I can tell you where the Ainu villages are. But if you don't even know where this thing is, then I expect it will be them who finds you first. Frozen solid, dogs and all. I suspect the Ainu will have had something to do with our quarry. That's a good enough starting place, don't you think, my lady? Indeed. I'd be most grateful for your directions. Oh, I don't think I got your name. Oji-san will do. And look at it this way, Oji-san. If we fail, then you'll know where there's a load of well-preserved meat out there in the wastes, just waiting to warm your belly. Mary, I'm trying to eat here. With all the supplies that we need, now finally acquired, it's time to start that short journey north to the coast and from there an even shorter journey across water to the island of Hokkaido. So here we are, going to pass right through the Nambu clan territory and into the uncolonized realms to the north. So we don't know where exactly the treasure is on Hokkaido, only that it's here, but that doesn't really narrow things down enough. So we will be going to find one of the tribal villages to see if we can find any clues there. 
On the way, we see that there are bands of warriors roaming around the land. These belong to local tribes, perhaps hunting parties and perhaps hoping to stop any southerners from coming up into Hokkaido, but they easily scatter before Naruko's huge war party. They have no chance at all against that and they appear to know this. So, because of that, it's going to be quite plain sailing as we continue on now having to walk through snow and ice as we are now in the northern part of the Japanese islands where it's pretty much always covered in snow and we are actually doing this in December to make things even harder for ourselves. So there's the village we're heading to Nipute and there's actually nothing between us and it, not even any more patrols from the local warriors. So we arrive to no fanfare whatsoever, the locals appear to be farming around their village uh, trying to get what farming they can out of this uh, harsh climate. So we proceed into the village centre and things look relatively prosperous, there's a lot of people. It's very similar to one of the Japanese villages back on the mainland, perhaps even more prosperous looking. So now we're here, we'll just have to start looking for clues. Leaving behind countless stories of her valour, Nariko finally embarked on her journey into Hokkaido. The hostile terrain made her lack of knowledge regarding the specific location of the treasure impossible to overcome without help. The local tribes were no friends to the southerners, but before a host of armoured, drilled soldiers, they had no choice but to capitulate. Although Naruko would soon find out that the people of Nipute were surprisingly familiar with the affairs of the samurai. Thanks for watching. The true importance of Naruko's journey will become clear on the next episode of Naruko's Treasure.